All right, so today I want to introduce you to the spinner blast ball python. The spinner blast consists of three genes, the pastel, the pinstripe, and the spider. Essentially what it is, it's a lemon blast with the addition of the spider. And when it comes to common names, I say most people in the ball python industry know what a spinner blast is. If you'd actually go to a reptile show, most of the times I'd say they'd probably list them on the display case as a spinner blast instead of listing out each individual gene. So sometimes it's kind of handy to actually know what some of the common names are for the combinations and when it comes to the spinner blast I'd say it's a really variable combination I've seen some really extreme examples from one to the other it's pretty amazing and when you work other genes into the spinner blast you can get some pretty amazing combinations so today I want to jump over the internet and I want to show you the potential of the spinner blast ball python all right, so I'm going to jump over here at morphmarket.com, and I want to start with the three genes that make up the spinner blast. And the first one I want to start with is the pastel. This is what one version of the pastel looks like. Sometimes the pastels can be super bright yellow, like this one, and sometimes they can be kind of a browned out yellow. And this one's kind of interesting. This is actually a pastel head ghost. Ghost is a recessive gene, and it's kind of interesting if you actually take just one copy of the recessive ghost and mix it in with a lot of other genes or other combinations a lot of times one copy of the ghost will really brighten the entire snake which is kind of an interesting anomaly for just one copy of a recessive gene i actually have a couple lessers in my collection i have a lesser possible head ghost and i'm pretty sure it's in there because it's quite a bit brighter than my other lesser which is kind of interesting and here is another gene in the spinner blast and that is the pinstripe and the pinstripe i'd say is one of my favorite genes a lot of times is a juvenile it can be a really bright gold almost like a metallic color gold which is pretty awesome and the spin stripe essentially has a really strong stripe usually right down the top of the back with tiny little pin stripes on the sides as a matter of fact on some of them you can almost see the little alien heads kind of scrunched up together it's, you can't really see it on this one but it's it's kind of interesting how variable just the pin stripes can be too and if you actually take the pin stripe and you mix it in with pastel this is what you get you get a lemon blast which is a combination of the pastel and the pin stripe and when it comes to a visual dominance kind of overwhelming other genes the lemon blast is really visually dominant a lot of times when you work lemon blast into other combinations the combination of the pastel and the pinstripe working together as kind of the lemon blast in the background a lot of times is really visually dominant in a lot of your combinations and essentially what it looks like it looks almost like a pinstripe and you can definitely tell the 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 pastel really brings in a lot of yellow color and a lot of times on these lemon blasts it can be pretty variable too Sometimes you have more of a shattered pattern where you don't really see the line coming down the back. And sometimes you don't even see the little pinstripes coming down the side. Sometimes it just completely jumbles up the pattern. And in order to get from the lemon blast to the spinner blast, essentially what you do is you add the spider. And this is what a one version of the spider looks like. The spider can be pretty variable. I'd say probably not as variable as some of the other ones. Sometimes with like pastels, you can actually line breed for certain lines of pastel and kind of line breed the brighter ones. When it comes to spider, I found that it's pretty variable, but you can't really line breed for the different spiders. I think it's pretty much the same with the pinstripe. They're just really variable. I don't think you can really line breed for the pinstripe or the spider as far as kind of picking out the certain traits of the pinstripe. As, oh, as a matter of fact, actually, <laughs> actually, you may be able to pick out maybe some that are a little bit golder. I've actually seen certain lines that have a little bit of gold color even between the pinstripe and the spiders, but as far as the pattern, I don't really think that you can really line read and some of the spiders have a really high white coming up the top you can actually see in this one it's almost 50 over 50 percent white which is kind of unusual for a spider this is a really high white example of a spider and if you actually took this and bred it to something else half the offspring would come out as spider but from what I found sometimes the white can be really high and sometimes it can be almost non-existent on the offspring sometimes within a certain clutch they can be really variable from one spider to the other and the spider essentially gets its name from the spider web pattern coming right down the back of the snake so here's what happens if you actually take the spider the pastel and the pinstripe we mix them all together you get a spinner blast take a look at this crazy snake this is pretty amazing and i'd say i actually looked at a whole bunch of spinner blasts over here and there was quite a few different versions of spinner blasts. it was hard to find one that was kind of a typical example of a spinner blast so i'd say this is a really 
really amazing spinner blast. You can actually see all the genes in this combination. You can see the pinstripe with the kind of the big stripe down the back with the pinstripe kind of little pinstripes coming down the side. You can definitely see the spider, the high white coming up the sides from the spider. And then the pastel brings in a lot of yellow. You can definitely see a lot of the yellow. And I actually found some other really extreme examples of spinner blast. Take a look at this one. This one is really crazy. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a spinner blast quite like this with all these little freckles and kind of a gray stripe right down the top of the back. And I was thinking this one actually sold. If this one was still for sale, I'd probably buy it just because it's such a unique example of a spinner blast. I was almost thinking there might be something else in there, but then I started looking around and it seems like I've seen quite a few spinner blasts with this little freckling all over the sides. I've never seen one as extreme as this one. That is pretty amazing. And here's another example of a spinner blast. Take a look at this one. This is a really white, kind of a washed out spinner blast. It's pretty amazing. I've seen quite a few over here that are like, just, there's so many different varieties of spinner blasts and how all three genes can work together. And it's pretty amazing. You can actually see such a variety from the white ones to the freckly ones to the really bright yellow ones. Pretty amazing. So take a look at this. This is actually the killer spinner, which is essentially what it is. It's the spinner blast with one more copy of the pastel. So this has the super pastel, the pinstripe, and the spider. And kind of the interesting thing with the super pastel, essentially what that does is it really explodes the pattern. Sometimes with two copies of the pastel, you can get a really busy pattern on a lot of the snake. And a lot of times the super pastel will bring out even more of the yellow color. Makes for a really crazy looking combination. So I'm going to jump into some of these other genes, some of the more unique genes that we can mix in with the Spinner Blast so you can see the true potential of the Spinner Blast. You can make some really amazing combos breeding it into other genes. As a matter of fact, if you actually take the Spinner Blast and breed it to a normal, all the genes are dominant or co-dominant so you can actually reproduce the Spinner Blast by breeding it to something else. So you can actually take the Spinner Blast breed it to a black pastel and work the black pastel into it. And the black pastel is kind of interesting. It's actually a dark morph. And if you actually work it into a lot of other combinations, a lot of times it'll darken the background of a lot of combinations. It's actually allelic with cinnamon. They kind of act as a super if you breed the black pastel to the cinnamon, which is kind of interesting. So here's what happens if you take the black pastel and you work it into the spinner blast. Take a look at this. This is kind of an interesting combination. Essentially what you get is you get an almost silver colored snake, which is kind of an interesting anomaly. If you actually look at the genetics on this, so this one's actually called the black pewter, which is the combination of the black pastel and the pastel. So a lot of times on the black pewters or the pewters, so the pewter is actually the combination of cinnamon and pastel, and cinnamon and black pastel are allelic. So sometimes you can swap one for the other and turn the pewters into black pewters by using the black pastel and sometimes with the pewters and the black pewters you can get really metallic looking snakes almost like a silver colored snake which is really visually dominant pretty much trumps almost anything else if you have the black pewter or the pewter and that is where you're getting a lot of the silver color in this combination pretty awesome so here is the lesser. The lesser is actually in the blue eyed leucistic complex. Speaking of visual dominance, if you actually take the lesser and you breed it to something else in the blue eyed leucistic, you end up with an all white snake with blue eyes, which pretty much trumps all the other genes in the combination. So a lot of people try to avoid the all white snake. They're, they're actually really awesome, the all white snake with the blue eyes. But if you actually if you actually hit it, it'll kind of mask all the other genes. You won't be able to see the spider or the pinstripe or anything like that in there. So here's what happens if you take lesser and you work it in with the spinner blast take a look at this this is a really interesting effect you almost get like an azanthic looking ball python this is actually called a queen spin and if you actually take a look at the genetics on this one this actually contains the lesser and the spider and i found when you mix the lesser with the spider it has an interesting effect where it almost like strips away all the color and you end up with an azanthic looking ball python which is kind of interesting and that is really visually dominant it too. It's kind of interesting how you hit certain genes and it really changes the visual dominance as far as everything else. So the this one actually has the pastel and the pinstripe, which is, you can kind of see the pinstripe in the back, but it's almost trumped by the lesser and the spider, stripping all the color into the queen spin. Kind of interesting. 
So here is the banana. The banana is really visually dominant just as a standalone gene. Usually if you work banana into something else, you get, no, most of the times you actually get a banana colored snake with kind of a jumbled up pattern, which is kind of interesting. So here's what happens if you work banana into the spinner blast. Take a look at this. This is actually the banana spinner blast and the banana color completely overwhelms all the color of the spinner blast. You can definitely see. And kind of the cool thing about the banana is a lot of times it'll overwhelm the color, but a lot of times it'll actually let a lot of the pattern shine through in the banana combinations, which is kind of the power of the banana. You can definitely see the kind of the jumbled up lines from the spinner blast kind of hiding in the background, you know, almost covered up by the banana. You can definitely see the high white coming up on the side from the spider. So here is the bamboo. As a matter of fact, this is actually a picture of Bobby, the snake that I have around my neck at the beginning and end of every video. I actually bought him over here in Morph Market. And he was actually, yeah, he was a proven breeder when I bought him. Bamboo proven breeder. I think he was like, he was like, uh, let's see, he was 1,350 grams when I bought him. As a matter of fact, after, right after I bought him, I started breeding him right away and got a whole bunch of bamboo hatchlings. And here's what happens if you work bamboo into the spinner blast. This is a really interesting combination. And you get kind of a kind of a gold metallic colored snake and this let me tell you I've actually produced some snakes that are similar to this and essentially what this is this is the combination of the bamboo and the pinstripe coming together when I, I found pretty much across the board when you mix bamboo and pinstripe together you get a really metallic looking snake which is pretty awesome especially if you work pastel into the mix and you get the the bamboo lemon blast it kind of gives you this really awesome almost like a bright gold it doesn't even look real actually holding some of these snakes. It's kind of crazy between the bamboo and the pinstripe. You can definitely tell the spider is kind of bringing up the white on this one too. Pretty amazing. So here's the last one I want to show you. This is a pretty interesting combo. If you want to take the spinner blast and make it as bright as you can, you can actually add some brightening genes. And two genes that really bring out a lot of the brightness in combinations is the yellow belly and the orange dream. Both of them bring out a lot of the yellows and oranges in combinations. And this is actually just the yellow belly orange dream. And kind of the interesting thing about the orange dream is a lot of times it'll really reduce the pattern almost into tiger stripes. You can definitely see it on this one. And sometimes you may be tricked into thinking there's actually Anchi in the mix because sometimes Anchi will reduce it and that's just kind of the, the characteristic of the orange dream. It can kind of trick you. And a lot of the orange dreams, as a matter of fact, if you actually flip them over and look at the bellies, a lot of times the bellies will have like het pied markers, like tracks on either side of the belly. So sometimes you can look at an orange dream and think, hey, that looks like an Anchi orange dream het pied, when in fact it's all part of the orange dream morph. And this essentially looks like an orange dream and then you add the yellow belly and it really brings out the brightness in the orange dream and here's what happens if you take the yellow belly orange dream and you work it into a spinner blast take a look at this i have to say this is probably one of my favorite combinations this is the orange dream yellow belly spinner blast so you have a whole bunch of brightening genes in here so essentially the orange dream brings in a lot of the yellows and oranges and then the yellow bellies really brighten it bring in more yellows and then in the spinner blast you have the pastel so you have the three bright genes the the pastel the yellow belly and the orange dream and then you have the combination of the spider and the pinstripe which is kind of interesting essentially what it does is it really reduces the pattern and i think this is reduced even more from the influence of the orange dream kind of changing the pattern of the spinner blast into almost little squiggly lines coming up and down the top of the stick that is really amazing you actually see the kind of the influence of the spider like one little line right here kind of of in white from the spider. Pretty amazing combination. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Hayden Ben Rice asks, how long should you keep a snake in quarantine? And that is a very good question. So essentially what I do is when I keep my snakes in quarantine, I put them in a separate room in a separate enclosure, pretty much away from my whole collection for about a month, pretty much for three to four weeks. And primarily what I'm looking at is I'm looking for mites. Let me tell you, if you actually get mites in your collection, it can be a nightmare to get rid of. When I first started in ball pythons, I was buying just random snakes all over, didn't quarantine any of them, threw them all down here together. And after about 20 snakes, I finally, 
unfortunately got one with mites and it took me months to get rid of those mites it's really kind of difficult to get rid of mites and they're like little blood sucking really tiny almost looks like pepper on your snake and they burrow in between the scales and cause red sores on your snakes let me tell you you do not want to get mites and I'll say there's some other people that kind of look at all the diseases in snakes there's actually some that people actually recommend quarantine your snake for up to six months which I find is kind of extreme you know six months for you know any problems with your the health of your snake as a matter of fact I pretty much just look at the the respiratory infection and the mites when I'm going into quarantine and coming out of quarantine and usually with the respiratory infection I don't think it's that contagious especially in a rack system but I definitely would not bring a snake with respiratory infection into my collection unless it was treated by a vet. And there's actually, I think there's actually antibiotics. So you can bring it to a vet and they'll give them injections, antibiotic injections. I think that's the proper treatment. Although don't quote me on that, I'm not a veterinarian. I haven't really had a problem with respiratory infection. There's other viruses and other infections that snakes can actually get. And luckily I've never run into problems with those. And keep in mind if you're actually getting your very first snake, I've actually heard this before. Hey, I'm getting my first snake do I need to quarantine it and you do not need to quarantine your very first snake essentially what quarantine is is you're trying to separate one snake away from the rest of your other snakes so you don't transfer you know the any kind of respiratory infection or mites or anything like that and if you only have one snake it doesn't really matter you don't really need to quarantine it because you really don't have anything to quarantine it away from and nothing else can really catch the like the mites or the infections that the snakes have I don't think it would transfer over to to people or dogs or cats although I think the the snake mites will actually transfer over to other reptiles so if you have some lizards I would probably still quarantine your snakes away from all your other reptiles so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video